I welcome everybody. I'm super uh, excited to be here. I'm Lea. I'm a community manager here at MaxQDA, and um, I would like would to welcome you to our first research session. Um, I'm super excited to finally have an event series from our community for our community. Um, we want to really get to know you and see what brought you to MaxQDA, how are you using it, and um, see all your amazing projects you're working on. And um, I also want to let you know that this is a free session where everyone is welcome to participate. So if you would like to do your own research sessions, please feel free to reach out to me. You can write me an email at research.network at maxqda.de or connect on LinkedIn as well. And now, without taking much more of Haitian's room, <laughs> I invite you to get a coffee, a tea, or whatever you want, and just uh, listen to Dr. Haitian Ning and her fascinating journey with her dissertation, where she is exploring media discourses on reference societies and PISA in Germany and mainland China. And um, after the 20 minute talk, we will also have some time for a QA so you can ask away your questions. We will also collect them here during your uh, during Hai Chin's talk, and then um, we can discuss and talk about it. So Hai Chin, it's your stage. <laughs> Thank you very much, Leah. Thank you very much for inviting me and having me here today. Maybe I should introduce myself first very shortly, briefly. Uh, my name is Hai Chin, uh, and I am out I am now a postdoc researcher at the Freie Universität Berlin. Um, I just finished my PhD thesis. That's why I was like, I would like to share you something about um, MaxQDA in my PhD thesis. And I'm very, very happy to have this opportunity to, to have the, this first kind of community event with MaxQDA community together, especially about and sharing how MaxQD has greatly helped me with my PhD thesis. Without MaxQD, I, I wouldn't have been able to handle such a massive amount of data effectively in the journey of my PhD thesis. So as you can see now on the right side of this slide, and this is a picture of my thesis. It explores media discourse on reference societies and PISA, comparing Germany and Milan China from a post-colonial perspective. I know it may sound complicated to you, but you don't have to worry. In the next 20 minutes, I will explain exactly what I did by answering these three questions. Um, first one, what is the topic of my PhD thesis and why I did I choose it? Second, what empirical data did I use for my research on this topic? And third, how did I analyze this data use, using MaxQDA? I look forward to hearing your feedback and any questions you may have. Leah will help me collect your messages during my talk. So we will have a QA, and a as Leah said, at the end of this session. So feel free to ask anything or give any comment on my presentation. Now let's get started. My research field is educational science, especially comparative and international education. One important topic within this field is policy borrowing and lending. In relation to this, the concept of reference societies play a very important role, which is defined as modern nation from which to borrow elements. A significant influence on discussions about reference societies in different contexts has been the program for international study assessment, which is PISA study. You may hear about that. In my doctor thesis, I investigate how the mass media in Germany and mainland China frame various reference societies when discussing PISA. For example, I analyze which education systems are mentioned and which are perceived as good education system, which means positive reference societies, as well as which countries are deemed worth of being emulated, that is the negative um, reference societies. 
Here you may ask what is PISA exactly if you don't come from educational science field and what is why it is important to take this study into consideration. So very briefly to PISA study. PISA is organized by the OECD every three years. It assesses the literacy of five years old students in math and reading and science. Over 70 in countries participate in this study. It has greatly influenced discussions on educational policy worldwide. For example, high performing countries like Finland have become role models globally. However, not all countries that are performing very well has been perceived as positive references, as positive role models, for example, some Asian countries. Even though they achieve similar results as Finland, they are often portrayed as traditional and not worth emulating. So there are more factors influencing the perception of reference societies, not only their PISA results. What are the factors? To find out the answer to this question, I choose two concrete cases to compare in my PhD thesis, Germany and mainland China. Um, like these two countries are very different, but I know both languages, like I originally come from China and I did my PhD also in Germany, so I compare these two countries and there is a significant disparity in the performance of Germany and China in the PISA study. Germany, for example, despite its pride, Germany was very pride of um, pride of its own education system, but the students have not achieved satisfactory results in the PISA study, which triggered the famous PISA shock in the mass media in Germany. In contrast, um, China traditionally seen as having a more having a more traditional or conventional education system has consistently ranked among the top performers, as you can see in this table. So a similarity between those two very different cases is that both countries experience kind of emotional shock on its own PISA results and engaged in deep reflection on their own education systems after participating in PISA study. At the same time, it sparked discussions about other countries, about um, the reference societies. Against this context, I conducted an empirical investigation using data from quality newspapers from both countries between 2001 and 2022, like almost 20 years. Um, a total of 267 German language and 294 Chinese language newspaper articles, which were relevant to my research questions, are collected and I employed qualitative methods to analyze the data along with the inductive categorization according to Myring and frame analysis according to Mechtus. As you may be aware, analyzing over 500 newspaper articles is no small task and conducting a through um, qualitative analysis requires powerful tools. I consider myself very fortunate to have encountered MexQDA and the MexQDA community during my doctor research journey. Um, their contributions have been invaluable and I would like to share maybe the concrete assistance I have received from MexQDA, approaching it from these three perspectives. First, the systematic data analysis and the organization and the comprehensive code system and third results presentation. In the first aspect, in terms of data management and organization, MaxQD has provided me with ability to classify 
my newspaper articles in two independent systems. One is document groups and it's separate um, groups as you can see on this uh, screenshot on the above part. And the second one is document sets is the low part. It, this allows me to categorize my articles from different angles, different perspectives based on specific newspapers, for example, and years or combine them by countries and years depending on the needs of my research questions and my analysis needs. And based on this categorization you saw just now, I was able to compare coding results between different groups and sets. Here is one example, like I could use the tool code matrix bronzer. I to examine the differences in coding results regarding specific reference societies among different newspapers. Combine, combine the years. Like I use the newspaper as unit of comparison to check the result and coding results. And the second example is that I can also compare the coding results across different years, which combines different papers. Those different kinds of combination and, and comparison could be realized with this very systematic um, document categorization and organizing system. And second, in the second aspect, MaxQDA's coding feature is highly powerful. It allowed me to create a complex coding system with over 8 sound coding results as you can see on the left side. Additionally, I also was able to code many segments with multiple, uh, multiple codes simultaneously as you can see on the right side. As a result, I can use some tools in MaxQDA, for example, here complex code configuration, you can find here in the round circle, to conduct a more detailed analysis of those coding results. For example, I use this feature to identify paragraphs that are simu simultaneously coded with my three main codes. And after that, MaxQDA generated an Excel table that displayed all the combination combinations and their frequencies and could be exported for further analysis. I use the data from the exported Excel table to create, it, um, to create visualizations using external tools like these two visuals illustrate the overall situation of RAM societies in Germany and mainland China respectively. As you can see, each visual has three layers. Here is the first layer is the, ref is the first main code and here the second layer, the third layer, they refer to the three main code. And I mentioned earlier, um, unfortunately, maybe due to the time constraints today and the small font size, I won't be able to explain more details at this moment, but I want to show you, I just want to show you this that could be um, realized using the data exported from MaxQDA, a very complex visualizations to present your result. I also used MaxQD maps to compare the similarities and differences between these two cases. This diagram you can see, for example, that shows us the reference societies placed in the middle are present in both cases, whereas elements on the left side and on the right side are unique to each case. Importantly, MaxQD maps um, interactive features allow me to easily incorporate this and proportional data for each code, making the whole process highly convenient. So I didn't have to add it manually. It's all automatically visualized data. And this um, visualization is automatically generated by MaxQDA. Finally, using the code frequency um, statistics, which is easily accessible in MaxQDA, I created word maps to visualize all reference societies that are occurred in German and Chinese media discourse and 
their occurrence and um, occurrence frequencies as you can see here on this slide by comparing these two main maps the differences between the two countries or between two media courses become apparent at a glance Yeah, the above are some personal experience and insights that I got during um, my PhD journey or my PhD thesis. Um, I have utilized MaxQDA extensively throughout my doctoral thesis to the point that it was challenging for me even to select like only three things to share in today's brief presentation. So I hope my presentation provided you with a glimpse of the various possibilities of MaxQDA. And in the end, I want to emphasize the research in regardless of the project size, it could be a bachelor thesis or master thesis or doctor thesis. Research um, per se is not simple. We often feel um, lost and uncertain. That's why we need scientific methods, powerful tools, like-minded friends, and also supportive communities to rely on. I am delighted to be part of the Mexico community and share my experience with you all. Today, I look forward then to receiving your feedback and questions, and or maybe you want to share something with us. Thank you very much for your attention and we can maybe go to the Q&A session. And some more incoming, but it's just uh, thank you, Hai Chin, for your presentation. Yeah. Thank you, thank you also again. Also from everybody. my side, yeah, thank also you. from my side, very, very, thank you, thank you very much for this invitation and again for the very interesting questions and exchange with all participants. Um, as I said already, research is not easy <laughs> and project doing research project is not easy sometimes it could be very confused and tough so it's very helpful it's important to have com com community and we won't feel alone and we will go through it together and yeah enjoy the journey <laughs> Yes, I think this is these are very good ending words. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much, Hechin. And um, I'm looking forward to hear from all of you, to hear from all of your projects, your research, what you're doing with MaxQDA. I'm excited to see um, everything. And um, yes, please, um, I really want to encourage you to do your own research session because it feels great, I think, to share. <laughs> and it's uh, definitely great to hear about um, all the different kinds of uses where MaxQDA yeah. um, is helpful. <laughs> great. All right. Thank you for joining us again in the evening, maybe different time, different time zone yeah. here. <laughs> and I wish all of you a good evening and good weekend. <laughs>